Thanks to Trade Coffee for sponsoring today's video. I have been juggling way too many games in my free time lately, and so I thought it'd be fun to go over a lot of the titles that I have been playing on my Switch. Some of these are brand new games that have come out recently I've started playing, and others are older titles that I just find myself going back to time and time again. And I really want to focus on some relatively smaller stuff. I mean, there's other big name games I've played, but I think people get the point. Animal Crossing, Xenoblade, all fun titles. So let's take a look at some slightly smaller ones. Starting with a game that I have been waiting for my chance to rant about in a video, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2. I took every opportunity I could to push how much I loved the original game back when it came out. It was an amazing title, especially for its price point, and 2 is bigger and better in pretty much every way possible. More playable characters with unique playstyles, bigger and more complex levels that have multiple routes depending on which characters you're using. A new difficulty mode that feels like a proper NES action platformer, new storyline modes to choose which affect which playable characters you can use, and of course, one of the biggest additions, the ability to play in two-player local co-op. Like the first game, Curse of the Moon 2 does an excellent job of balancing out some nostalgic style gameplay, which feels like a proper game that released back during the NES era, but balancing that out with some quality of life changes and some more modern mechanics that make it a lot more accessible. Really, it's designed in such a way that if you aren't really looking for a challenge, but you want something that feels like an old school game, there is an easy, accessible way to play it. Or if you want it to challenge and push you, it's got those choices too. Topping all that off is the fact that one of the new playable characters in this game is literally a corgi driving a mech. If that is not enough reason for you to try and play this game, I don't know what will convince you. Even though this has been out for a few months and I soaked a lot of playtime into it at the start, unlocking all the different modes and everything, I find myself going back to it with every free chance I get just to do a random playthrough to kill time or challenge myself with some of the game's higher difficulty options and even doing solo character runs. Chances are, if you love the original game, you've already gone out of your way to pick up and play this one, but if you haven't played any of them yet, I beg of you, pick them up, play the first one, then play the second. These are some of the best retro love letters that have been made in recent history. They deserve to be played. And they're not that expensive. Now, as for a more recent release that's actually the oldest game on this list, is Moon. Now, this game's history is actually very interesting. This was originally a PS1 RPG exclusive that came out back in 1997, but it was a Japan-only release, and just recently, at the end of August, we got an English localization that is a Switch exclusive. Despite the fact this game never got released in the US, it's actually had a major impact on a lot of different indie games that are out there, one of the most notable being Undertale, which draws a lot of inspiration from the kind of emphasis on poking fun a little bit at the RPG genre and just game design in general, and focusing a lot more on building the storyline and relationships you have with other characters. Ultimately, the game is about earning love. Frankly, this game is very bizarre and not for everyone, but if you have any nostalgia for the old school SNES to PS1 era RPGs, either because you grew up playing them or you went out of your way to hunt them down and play them as an adult or when you were younger, it's a fantastic trip back in time that is a parody and commentary on games of that era. If you're looking for some kind of crazy action game to play, this is not it. It is focused on dialogue, storytelling, and a lot of in-game humor that is very, very charming. It definitely shows its age, and because of that, I think it doesn't have quite the same impact it would have as if you had played it back in the late 90s, but regardless, it's still a really interesting part of history to experience, and if you love playing older school games, this is going to fit right in and be a brand new title that you probably never got the chance to play before. It's weird, it's unique, and even by today's standards, it's unlike a lot of other titles out there. I do recommend, though, that if you want to try the game out, it's a little esoteric in teaching you the rules of the game. There are ways in-game to learn, but they have also posted an online instruction manual, which helps out a lot. Real quick before moving on to our next game, something that is a very important part of my morning routine before playing anything is having my morning cup of coffee, which has been made much easier thanks to today's sponsor, Trade. Trade makes it super easy to discover new coffees brought right to your door from some of the biggest roasters from across the country. I've been really trying to tone down how often I go to the grocery store lately, and something I've been doing over the last few months is started making my own coffee at home using my own French press and coffee grinder. So Trade has given me a great way of trying a variety of different beans and helps me kind of figure out which ones I want to actually give a shot. They make it really simple to start off. You just have to take an online quiz which helps figure out what kind of flavor profile you like, what method you prefer to use to brew your coffee, whether or not you like to have it black or with cream and sugar, and then it recommends like a number of different coffees for you to try out. 
Once you figure out a coffee you want to try, you can then pick your delivery frequency, getting a fresh bag either once a week, every two weeks, spacing it out depending on how often you end up brewing. And once you get a chance to brew and try out the coffee, you can then rate and review it on their website so they can get a better idea of what other ones to recommend you. Check the link down below to learn more, and if you sign up, you'll get 30% off your first bag. All right, back to the games list. Next up is, I think, probably the highest profile game on this list. It's still an indie title, but it's got a lot of love for it, and is one of the big hits of this year, at least amongst kind of smaller games, Streets of Rage 4. Growing up, I loved the beat-em-up genre, and it's one that gets its occasional kind of resurgence every now and then over the past couple years, but there definitely is not a ton of these games out there to choose from, especially of the 2D variant. And while I would love to hear some news about a Scott Pilgrim return, scratch that, we recorded that part of this video before this most recent UB Forward event, where it was announced that Scott Pilgrim is indeed finally coming back this holiday season, and it's coming to a bunch of systems, including the Switch. So, Street Stage 4, still great, grab that, but get, get Scott Pilgrim too. Just do it. And Battletoads on PC and Xbox has been a lot of fun. Undoubtedly, the best beat em ups game that has come out in recent memory is Streets of Rage 4. This is a continuation of, and a love letter to, the Streets of Rage games that came out back on the Sega Genesis, and is by far one of the best executions of the beat-em-ups formula. The art style of the game is amazing, the music is incredible, and the gameplay is this really good balance of something that is easy to pick up and learn, but if you take the time to actually experiment and mess around with each character, there are some really complex combos you can figure out. And thankfully, each of the game's main five playable characters handle very differently. There are actually even more characters beyond these five where you can unlock retro versions that are, which is definitely primarily a form of fan service. I think the best gameplay comes from playing as the actual main focus characters of this title, but you gotta love the dedication to pleasing their fans. A single playthrough of the game is an appreciable length for the beat-em-up genre, but it's obviously still something that is very short, but if you are into doing multiple playthroughs, trying out different characters, doing higher difficulties, playing an online or local multiplayer, there is a lot of playtime to get out of this, and is some of the most that I have soaked in the beat-em-up genre in quite some time. Also, one really random thing about the game that I actually love is one of the options you can select is changing what the healing item food items are. So whether you want to have it be the traditional big ol' roast or turkey, or you want something that's a vegan option, or you want a bowl of ramen, it lets you change that. And that is such a fun, cool little detail. Well, the game has already been a big success as is, some great news is that there is also some more DLC being planned for it, adding even more content. If you like beat up games, you should have already picked this title up. If you haven't, do it right now. And if you haven't played that much of the genre, this is definitely one of the best gateway options there is. Because again, it is a great balance of easy to pick up, difficult to master, and has a number of different difficulty options to choose from. One quick random note too, I love the fact that the physical edition of this game comes with an instruction manual. I miss those so much, and while I understand there's a very good reason why not every game comes with one of those, especially something that is a retro love letter, it just feels right. Now, from highest profile to probably something that is a relative unknown, I haven't really seen a lot of people talk about this game, but I love it, Slayin' 2. This is a sequel to what was actually a mobile game that came out a long time ago on phones, and I soaked so many hours in that game in my free time back in the day, and I'm so happy to have a new version of it to play. The gameplay of Slayin' is very simple. You pick from a number of different playable characters and run around hitting enemies by running into them and can make use of some special attacks as well, trying to dodge their attacks at the same time and just get the highest score you possibly can. Now, the original game was purely an arcade-style experience where you would just survival mode, get as far as possible, and get higher and higher scores, whereas the new game has both that and the new addition of a campaign mode, which kind of acts as both as a tutorial to learn the game, slowly unlocking characters and figuring out more stuff you can do, and ramping up the difficulty over time. You can still play the single plane style like the original, but the new gameplay really focuses being able to attack enemies in one lane and quickly switch over to the other one in order to try and quickly build up more combos by letting enemies group up in one side, or using it as a way to get out of trouble if you're feeling a little overwhelmed. This is a super simple game to learn, it's cheap to pick up. If you're a fan of arcade-style gameplay where you just can have something you can jump into and keep trying to top your own high score, not necessarily something that's going to be any kind of long-term engagement storytelling type of thing, this is a great game to play when you just want to kill some time. Now, a lot of games on this list have been bright, colorful, and happy, and something that stands in a very hard opposite of all of that is Blasphemous. I know it's kind of a meme to refer to a game being the Dark Souls version of something, but in Blasphemous's case, that is very much the intention. It is a Metroidvania-style game that draws heavy inspiration from the Dark Souls franchise, both in terms of its setting and tone, gameplay elements, and even making use of different storytelling mechanics like looking at items and reading them in order to learn more and more about the setting's lore. 
If you couldn't tell by looking at the gameplay, this is definitely not something that is a super happy fun type of game in tone, but I absolutely love the style and flavor of it. It just soaks itself so much in it, and I can't find any other word to describe all of it better than it's just metal. Plus, all the fun style and flavor aside, it's also just a really good Metroidvania that doesn't hit the same kind of annoying levels of difficulty that some of the Souls-like games can hit, but still offers a really good challenge. This is one of the older games on the list, and I was actually playing it a lot about a year ago, but the reason why I've been jumping back into it recently is because in early August, they released a free update that added basically a new Game Plus mode that adds a lot more difficulty along with new storylines and side quests to explore, basically giving you reasons to do a brand new playthrough that is not only more difficult, but gives you something a little different as well. There are a lot of different Metroidvania love letters out there, and while I wouldn't necessarily say this one is my favorite, I think Hollow Knight still holds that place, and I'm still waiting for some kind of definitive news on what's happening with Silk Song and when I can play that. But until then, Blasphemous is definitely one of the best other ones out there. It's definitely in my top five. Check it out. Now, there's one more game I want to talk about, and it's cheating a little bit because I haven't been playing it on my Switch because it's not on the Switch just yet, but it has gotten a release date for a Switch version, and thankfully it is going to support cross-save with the PC version of the game, so I can just continue my experience on there. Another quick update since we last shot this video, uh, it's actually been confirmed that Hades will not be supporting cross-save at launch, but their specific wording is that it will support it by the end of this year. I am a big, big fan of everything Supergiant Games makes. Every single one of their titles has been a big hit in some regard, they all have their own individual strengths and flavor and style, and Hades is no exception to that. And honestly, has been growing on me so much that I think it might actually be my favorite one. Like all the titles to come from Supergiant Games, this game has beautiful visuals, a great soundtrack, good storytelling, great voice acting. It just fires on all cylinders, which is something I can appreciate so much. And best of all, this probably has the highest replayability out of any of their games, giving it tons of hours to play. This is a roguelike action game where you do multiple run-throughs, trying your best to escape Hades, literally the name of the game, and is soaked in Greek mythology. What's really nice about this is that something that sometimes is lacking in roguelikes is storytelling, because it's really hard to wrap a narrative around just doing the same thing over and over again, hoping to do better, but Hades manages to execute on this. There is a large cast of characters for you to interact with and grow relationships with over the course of the game. You learn a little bit more about everyone as you keep attempting to make your escape. And even once you have made your escape, there are more reasons to keep playing because of how much stuff you can unlock and new play styles to do with different weapons, different loadouts and builds, it's just such a good execution of everything I love about both roguelikes and Supergiant style games. I cannot recommend this game enough. It is easily the title I've soaked the most time into over this past year. It's just so easy to do random multiple playthroughs, try and do better better each time, try different stuff, and learn a little bit more of its cast each and every time you do. Plus, because it's been in early access, they just keep adding more and more content to try out, which has been really fun to do. Uh, the game doesn't actually have a full true ending yet. That's happening with the full release, so here's hoping it pays off. So those are the Switch or soon-to-be Switch games that I've been having a lot of fun with. Make sure to let me know down below in the comments what games you've been enjoying a lot lately. And don't forget to check out that link down in the description for trade to get 30% off your first bag of coffee.